People have asked me, when did I leave home? And my response is, I never left home, home left me. We had a slightly dysfunctional family. And in that dysfunction, my mom went through four marriages. Uh, I had five different stepdads. My grandfather was the, the mainstay of our family. He moved away when I was 13. I got saved shortly thereafter. But by the time my mom and dad began to quarrel, fight all the time, by the time I was 15 and a half, they decided it was time for them to split. Uh, finances were tight. We took on borders. My mom married a best friend of mine who was one of the boarders at the house to help offset the bills. Um, at or about the same time, she married him. My sister and she were getting high in the bedroom. And everything that I thought that was stable in life and that had a moral value was just turned inside out. My dad wasn't there. My grandpa wasn't there. I was left alone. I had nowhere to turn. I remembered that I was born again, but at the same token, I realized I had to just keep going forward. Getting married, after three years, we had this wonderful joy come into our life. It was my son, and now it was my turn to become a father to this young man, Ryan. And as I held him, I just couldn't believe that it was now my responsibility to father him, and I had no one to draw from. My father had left, my grandfather had moved away, and there I was holding my son. And I said, Lord, I need help here. What am I going to do? But something was happening in my heart when I'd realized that by leaving my past behind, I hadn't really properly dealt with it. I'd kind of stuffed it and just said, this is going to have to heal itself. I'm born again, I'm now a father, I have a business, but there was a nagging something that something just wasn't right. And by the time Ryan was five years old, by the time I was 30, I found out that my grandfather, who had always told us that my mom was his only child, found out that he had given up his very first child for adoption somewhere in Southern California. It was hush hush. My grandfather went to go meet this gentleman, and when he came back, there was more than just a small stir in the camp in our family. My grandmother was upset because she had no idea that this had happened before they were married. And my mom says, Mike, I need to talk to you. And I said, what, Mom? She says, well, you know, your birth certificate name is Della Guerra. I said, yes, I know that. She said, well, have you ever wondered why you don't look like your sisters? And I said, no. She said, well, when I was 16, I got pregnant by another man besides your father. He married me to give you a name, and there's another man. She said, would you like to know who he is? And I, I felt like the deer in the headlights. I couldn't believe it. These missing pieces of abandonment, of wondering why it was I didn't have this connectivity with my, with my father. I realized that there was another man way before. I never knew this fellow. And I had a brief moment, it was like history stopped, the world stopped, and I said, Lord, what do I do? And he gave me a piece and he says, if you'll allow me to heal your wound, you don't need to go after the other man because I'll be there for you. And I felt this pressure roll off my shoulders and I said to my mom, I said, Mom, you know something right now? I have four stepdads and a grandpa. I can't handle one more. And she says, well, his name was Stephen. And she goes, I don't know, even know if he knows you exist, but I want you to know that I've always loved you. Well, it, when my mom said that, I'd realized that all the stuff she had gone through, all the changing of the morals in our family, everything that had fallen apart, this was a woman who'd been concealing a secret all along because she'd fallen in the sins of her father, the wound from her dad, who never told her that she had an older brother. And I saw this generational curse happen, and it just kept coming down. And I said, Father in heaven, I need you to heal this. I need to stop this. My kids need to know that they have one dad. They have one biological father who loves them. Part of my testimony is, the same son that I had, right? 
had an accident several years ago and for 25 days I got to hold him but he was in a hospital bed. I said, Lord, he's my only son. And he says, do you want to be healed? And I said, of course I do. He says, then trust me. And 25 days later, I got that call that no parent ever wants to hear. The doctor said, you need to get here right away. As soon as we arrived, the doctor says, it's time. Life support system can no longer keep your son alive. And I said, okay, I'm ready. And I had to, that little boy that I held. I had to give back to Jesus. I thought, Lord, I don't understand. I go through all this healing and then this. And he says, can you trust me? Five days later at his memorial service, there were 1,200 people there. And when I shared, I shared the gospel. I said, guys, I don't understand this. You're looking at a wounded man that's hurt. But I'd even feel worse if after what I've shared with you over these last 30 days, you don't respond and ask Christ in. And I'd realized I had to go above my wound. And that day, several men, hardened men and women, received Christ. And I was wounded. But out of my wound, I saw that I was healing. And then through my healing, I was able to help other people receive their healing. It doesn't make sense that that's the way God does things. And I'm just thankful. Thankful that today I know my, where my son is. Thankful to know where my family is. And thankful to know that when we acknowledge our wound, God begins to heal, but we don't always know what it's going to look like.